it's really pretty obvious that the number one is the buzzer beater against Arizona State two years ago. Long distance. Oh, oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! They'll take a look at it. There's a ton of favorite memories coaching at UC Riverside in the five years that I've been here, and we've been fortunate enough to knock off some high majors like Nebraska and University of Washington. And last year we had the most successful season in school history, 22 wins. But so far we've had, you know, four successful seasons of building this type of culture, four straight winning seasons. And it takes a lot of hard work. It takes, number one, recruiting the right kinds of coaches and players, student athletes on the front end, letting them know that we really value character, attitude, work ethic, and then guys that really, really, really want to be here at UC Riverside. Like, you have to make a decision that I want to wear UC Riverside across our chest. How you doing? Good. Uh, good to see you, buddy. After surviving the real estate crash, I decided to get my master's in real estate at NYU, and I wrote letters to all the Division One colleges in New York City and in the, in the area, and I got one response from Kyle Smith, who just got the job at Columbia University. He's like, all right, come see me in my office. And I came, walked in, and he said, don't do it. You'll never make it. Nobody ever makes it. You don't make any money. And he wasn't wrong. You know, from 2010 to for the next 10 years, I was kind of working my way through the coaching ranks of college basketball before finally catching a, a miracle break to be a head coach. You know, there's only 367 of them. So I'm super blessed to have this opportunity. Look at what happened there. Jalen's back door to Isaiah Fowl. When I first got the job, my head was spinning. And all of a sudden, I started seeing some of these news clippings that I was, a, I was the first full Asian American head coach in Division I history. And then it really, the flood started coming in, not so much from American media outlets, but from Thailand and China. And then from my, my parents are from the Philippines, born and raised, and, and I'm the first generation born here in Los Angeles, but take a lot of pride in being Filipino. And I'm also the president of the Asian Coaches Association. So I take a lot of pride in directing and helping young Asian coaches come up through the ranks. So my job is to just keep the door open, open it wide for the next generation of young Asian coaches to, to run through that door. I think the diversity, equity, inclusion piece is you just look at our basketball program. We got international pieces. You got a head coach who's full Asian American head coach in, in Division One history. We have an African American athletic director. When you walk around campus, and it's something I'd say it is a, as a great thing, it is diverse. I mean, it is a melting pot here. It looks like Southern California, and so it's just really cool to see the diversity, and you see it flood into the athletics program. I grew up 45 minutes from here. Coincidence, I met my wife in New York City. She got her undergraduate degree from UCR, so she's an alum. And I'm a UC product myself, so I really value the whole UC system. I value the degree, and I just think UC Riverside is, is growing, and, and there's a ton of opportunity here and you see it all over campus. So I just love to see growth and I love to see the potential and I just think UC Riverside has unlimited potential.